today is a critical day. Why? Because today is the day you found this video. And today we're gonna explore where the absolute magic is in your chart. It's Pisces day and wow. This is no small mission. So come with me on this Pisces ride and learn all about the truths of Pisces. We are going to go deep. And I am talking about the deepest of the deep. See, wherever you have Pisces in your chart is where you have the mystical and the mysterious and the magical parts of your life hidden in. And we all have Pisces somewhere in our chart. This is the part of you where you crave going into the depths of your soul only to find that vast, infinite space inside of yourself that connects to all things. This is the place of your divine resonance. And it's where you will literally surrender to your faith into the arms of gods, or into the arms of God, or your angels. Pisces will show you your pathway, your gateway into enlightenment. It's that deep place inside of you that actually, actually feels okay to die, to leave this planet and to go to the truth that there is something other than just this, other than that which we see, that willingness to go explore the other side, the place in between incarnations. So where is that Pisces place in your chart? We all have it somewhere, but where is it in your chart? It matters so, so much. And you're so lucky to have found this video <laughs> because we're going to hit the mystical jackpot. So whatever house Pisces holds in your chart is the arena in which you access this particular place. It is the doorway. It is the stage in which you get to or have access or have the golden key to the infinite power. If you have a planet there, that is the part of you that is activated when reaching this divine space. And specifically, if this is your moon, well, then this is especially your good day and your video. Now, all people are going to be able to relate to this video as we all have Pisces in our chart. But if you have a planet, tell me what planet do you have in Pisces? Be sure to tell me what house do you have Pisces in? Also, please do tell me if you are so blessed to have a Pisces moon. My Pisces playlist, my entire Pisces playlist is one of my most popular, most watched, and most loved playlists out of all of the playlists. And my Pisces community is a little bit different than others because they are so willing to share their stories and share their examples. And sometimes I literally cry tears reading what the Pisces souls have left in the comments. And so I just want to say I love your love, I love your generosity, and I love your desire to help other people understand Pisces energy. This is no small task. Like I said, this is no small mission. Most astrologers or most videos that I have found on Pisces talk about them being extra sensitive and space cadets. And while you know, that might be true. Why is that true? Why are they out there? Why are they sensitive? Well, I'm going to give you the secrets in this video and I want you to stay to the end because I've got a tip and a technique for you that you absolutely have to have in order to understand the Pisces planets in your chart. But your Pisces moon is so extra sensitive. You have to know my last tip or trick or technique, whatever you want to call it, in order to really really understand the complicated tapestry inside your Pisces moon. Now, Pisces energy is not easy energy to talk about. And I wonder if that's why some people simplify it. Like, is that why some astrologers are just talking about it as if it is extra sensitive? It is so much more profound than that. It's actually so profound. It's difficult to articulate the words. It's difficult to find the words. It's difficult to put Pisces energy into the concrete 
tangible world, but I'm going to do it for you. So stick with me to the end of this video and come with me on this incredible magic carpet ride. Okay, everybody go get your natal chart right now. And I really hope you have one of my gorgeous natal charts that I designed. All you have to do is click the shop tab at soulnavigation.com or just check the notes below and you can go purchase one for hardly anything. They are so worth it. I put absolutely everything in it. It's color coded. It is so easy. I use the Placidus house system. But if you want a different house system, if you know your house systems and you want whole signs or gosh, if you want yours done in a draconian style, that's fine too. If you want Coke or Porphyry, we can do that too. But my preferred charts and what I default to and what I kind of use and believe in the most is Placidus. So be sure to go over to Soul Navigation and get your natal chart. Okay, so bring your natal chart so you can follow along with this video and you can watch my entire Pisces playlist. You'll get so much information information from the whole entire playlist when you're done watching this video. First, I want to say a little something here, and that is, is that there are no bad moon signs and there are no bad houses for the moon, but there are useful and there are beneficial ways to activate your moon sign and also the house that your moon sign is in. So you need to know your moon sign and the aspects that it makes to your sun and your rising sign are critical. Of course, the aspects that it makes to Saturn and Mars and Uranus and Pluto are critical too, and Venus as well. They'll tell me so much about you. But what I really want you to focus on just in this video is the aspects that your moon makes to your sun and to your rising sign. Are they in harmony or are they in challenged aspects? Pisces moons are deep. And they are, in fact, in touch with the collective conscious. They're also deeply, deeply in touch with the needs and the feelings of everyone, of every living creature. They are inspiring beyond imagination. Just the way they talk and the way they think is just fascinating and riveting to be around. They love full out, wholeheartedly, and infinitely, and they are some of the most creative geniuses ever to be birthed in this world on earth. I can think of two off the top of my head, Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci, and both of those men literally touched and changed mankind. After they left their mark, the world would never, ever be the same again, would it? Michelangelo through his art and Leonardo through his inventions. Elvis Presley, he changed the expression of music and practically invented rock and roll. Audrey Hepburn, the actress turned activist, wanting to save the world and probably did save a slice of it. Grace Kelly, who became the princess of Monaco. Edgar Allan Poe, who forever changed the literary world and showed the dark side. He was one of the very first to show the true dark side of life. Martin Luther King and his wife, Coretta Scott King. Goethe, the genius. Coco Chanel, Paul Cezanne, one of my very favorite people in the entire world. Helen Keller. Interesting fact, you know, 43 million people today in 2022 live with blindness, full blindness. And do you know almost 300 million people live with moderate to severe visual impairments? Oh my God. Did Helen Keller even have any idea as a 14 year old girl how many millions that's 350 million people. That's the entire United States of America, but spread around the world. That's how many people's lives she has changed, helping bring awareness to what it means to be blind and to give people hope and inspiration. She is just one of my biggest heroes. I love her story so much. So I wanted you to think of the impact of the people who have Pisces, Pisces moon in their chart. I don't even need to say it, but they are so creative. They are so spiritual. They are so very psychic. They are immensely sensitive, empathetic, and compassionate. They are incredibly imaginative, and they are the poetic souls. They are the visionaries. And of course, they can be the spaced out dreamers and those that need to escape. I mean, they are they have such a genius inside of them. Of course, they need to check out. They also can be much more easily in touch and aware of other dimensions. And they may even feel 
at times so alone in this world, in this galaxy, or in this universe. All of the infinite energy inside the vast space of eternity. That's how aware Pisces moon people are. And that's a very, very lonely, lonely game of awareness. They are literally in touch with everything, everything. What's underneath us, what's invisible to us, other galaxies, God, the infinite. Can you imagine? Just try on how lonely that feels. Feel how small you feel when you compare yourself to the energy of all things. Okay, I just have to say, if you guys want to learn more astrology with me, hopefully you know me by now. Hopefully you've watched all my videos, I hope. And hopefully you're a super supporter. But if you want to come to my master classes, come be a superstar super supporter. You can level up. Also, I will promise you to use your chart as an example in my members only videos. So I will look at your chart and I will give you a mini reading in my members only videos. And all my super supporters get to see those. So so if you're a super supporter, thank you. I love you. And if you're a superstar super supporter, I cannot wait for you to join my masterclass. I'm going to have two masterclasses and then you get to come to my tarot card reading too and bring a question. And also if you're a superstar super supporter, I will answer any comment you put on my YouTube channel. And I just wanted to say welcome. And I absolutely love having all of you in this learning community and I can't wait to grow it even more. So welcome. So wherever you have Pisces energy, even if it's not your moon sign, it will tell us almost everything we need to know about you. <laughs> Do leave me a comment right now and let me know where you have Pisces in your chart. So if you have a packed 12th house with any sign, it doesn't matter. If you have seven planets in Cancer and they're all in the 12th house, well, this video is for you. If you have a Pisces Sun, Venus, Mercury, Moon, Mars, or Rising Sign, or Midhaven, this video is going to be a video that you're going to be able to relate and you have to watch the entire Pisces playlist. Like I said, this is your doorway into your spirituality. So is it challenged or is it an easy door to open. And where it is in your chart will let us know how easy it is for you to access that part of our existence. So you also know that the moon in your chart represents your relationship to your mother, right? So when you look at the moon in your chart and you see a Pisces moon, it doesn't mean your mom is a Pisces, but it means your relationship to her. her. So here's your mom and here's you. It's the connection between you and her that is Pisces. And so you sort of view her as a Pisces and you can see what kind of mom that you have in your chart just by what moon sign you have. So if you don't have a Pisces moon, you have a different moon, leave me a comment below and let me know what moon sign do you have and make sure you go watch that moon sign video that I did. As a matter of fact, you should watch the entire moon playlist because you do have all those energies in your chart somewhere. And my moon sign video goes really deep. So you can see sort of the underbelly of each sign in my moon series videos. It's also very telling if you have hard aspects or easy aspects to the sun and your rising sign to see if you had an easy relationship with your mom or if you had a more challenging relationship with your mom. So if you have a Pisces moon, well, then if your rising sign or sun sign is either water or earth, then that was probably a fairly easy relationship. I mean, it does depend where Pluto, Saturn, and Mars is, but you probably had a fairly easy relationship, or at least you saw your mother as well-intentioned in your life. And if you have um, fire signs or air signs as your rising or as your sun sign, then you might have had a more challenging relationship with your mom if you do have a Pisces moon. Also, were you born under a full moon or a crescent moon? Those are the phases of the moon. And if you guys want me to do a video on all the phases of the moon, if you have a new moon phase, a crescent moon, if you have a last quarter moon, if you have a balsamic moon, let me know if you want me to do a video on those phases of the moon and I will do that for you. So in order to fully understand your moon sign, you need to know the sign, the house, and the aspects that it makes. And the moon is equally as important to understanding you as the sun because it's the buried treasure inside of you. Your moon makeup represents the depth of you. It's also really important that you have a good moon connection to your lover or loved one. It's good to have a good sun connection, but 
I like moon connections inside your most intimate relationships. And I say that because that's your most intimate needs. That is your deepest needs. Those are where inside of your moon lives your deepest sense of your soul. It's where you want to be known and felt and seen. Your moons have to connect in some way, shape, or form in order to feel an emotional bond. You guys need to know how it works with your love. And if you don't know, you should get my lover's package. It is so, so good. It works best though if you do have the birth time for both. You can still get it if you don't have the birth time, but it's a lot more juicy if you do, of course. It's definitely still worth it if you don't have the birth time. It's so highly accurate. And it will talk about the relationship from their perspective uh, about you and from your perspective about them, and then how you affect one another. And in the whole package, you get both people's gorgeous natal charts, you get two deep dive natal reports, and you get your whole entire compatibility report. So it is jam packed juicy. Now, if you already have your natal charts and you already have your deep dive reports, then you could just get the love report. And then that's just the compatibility report, but it will show you how all your planets line up together and which planets are in challenge and which planets are in harmonious aspects together. You're going to absolutely love it. So tell me, how does your moon work with your partner's moon, sun, and rising? Because that's important. And if it is in harmony with all three of those, well, that's a triple threat. And I give you the trophy. Now, if you have your moon in challenge aspect to your partner's moon, sun, or rising, or even your own, it's okay. Nothing bad is going to necessarily come of it. But it does mean that you will grow out of of crisis, you will grow out of being challenged and you will grow out of learning and stretching and being willing to grow. And you will probably have to put a little bit more energy, effort, and sweat equity into your partnership in order to get the sweet succulents out of it. It doesn't mean it's bad. It just means you not you might not be handed, you know, the golden goose on a silver platter. You might have to go out and hunt and kill the goose and clean it yourself and cook it. Let me tell you, my friends, there are great rewards in that way too. So Pisces moon people have a very interesting relationship to their moms and they usually have a very colorful mother. That's for sure. And the mom usually shakes out, shakes out one of two ways. The first is, is that the mom will either be a saint or an angel, someone who is so sensitive and so deeply loving to other people, someone who embodied compassion and thoughtfulness and empathy and sensitivity to underdogs in life and helping anyone who was wounded or ill or sick or a victim. And this mom could have been a victim of her own martyrdom. She may have put other people's needs always before her own and even allowed some level of unfair treatment in her life. And oftentimes that unfair treatment could have even come in the form of of loving you and caring for you by the other person, like the right person loved her wrong. Do you know what I mean? She could have been violated in some way, for real, and then became a victim of it. And you may even feel like your own your own mortal ways of loving another fall short to the goodness inside your own mom. The other type of mom Pisces moon people receive is the mom that is a complete victim in life. And she may have struggled with depression, food or drug or uh, alcohol, addiction. She may have been diagnosed with an illness that made having a relationship with her very, very difficult or challenging. She may have struggled with seeing the truth or telling the truth about herself or you or her family. She may have been a kleptomaniac, a compulsive liar, deceitful in some way, and also not seeing her own crimes. She might have even become needy inside her relationships, even with you. You may have had to become your mom's mom even at an age way too young and you may have had to step into a parenting role and you may have loved your mom but secretly resented her or not so secretly for having to take care of her and her needs and rescuing her and she can also be a person who rescued others especially when she was young and maybe she might have chosen partners that were not good enough for her or beneath her but she just 
was on a savior mission or a mission to save others or to help fix up and take care of and even bring back to life their partner. And your mom may have experienced an emotional deficit where she suffered the emotional damages that left her needing too much. And that's why she's probably emotionally somewhat needy. That's especially true if you have negative or hard aspects to the moon. But regardless of which mom you got, and I'd love your comments, please let me know if you can relate to this and if this was true for you. But you probably, no matter which mom you got, you know, the saint or the saint martyr or the victim martyr, both of them are martyrs, but that your mom was well-intentioned, but was born with some sort of uh, family dynamic that created a disadvantage for her. And there is a great sensitivity or even an obligation, which makes separating from her kind of hard to do, even impossible to do, even if it's healthy to do, or even if it's necessary to do. So why does Pisces have a need and want to deeply, deeply merge with others? I oftentimes say Aquariuses stand two feet away from other people and Pisces want to merge so deeply that they live inside of another. Why is that? People and animals. I mean, they can get addicted to people. They can get addicted to love. That is a real thing for Pisces, an addiction to love. <laughs> you remember that song, Addicted to Love? Yeah, that's the Pisces song. And they are a sign that goes way beyond themselves. And they live with a deep and a wide uh, awareness of others. Their evolutionary goal actually, are you listening to this, actually allows them to learn over time, if they're healthy, to shed their ego, to live in a state of abundant compassion and sympathy toward all living beings, plants, animals, and minerals, and to learn to live loving others without conditions. Can you imagine that? How do you love unconditionally? Well, one thing that I have learned in my 55 years is that it starts with forgiveness. And as an evolved Pisces, you will come to see that you have mastered the art of forgiveness. If you're evolved, you will see that the ultimate Pisces stands in a deep and powerful oneness with the universe, a oneness with God. The unevolved Pisces, the Pisces that's still on their way, is also super easy to spot because they can't get out of their pain and suffering and they victimize themselves and they're unable to forgive the wrongdoings that were placed upon them and they suffer inconsolably at times. And often they are a victim of their own self-inflicted unnecessary wounds and they can be so deeply wounded that they stay stuck in perpetual pain. Pain. And they can be so marred with this suffering that their only way out is pure escapism. A sad Pisces creates such a boomerang effect on the world and in their community because others can see so clearly their suffering is so unnecessary and they actually are true vessels of love that cannot sometimes access their own vat of love for themselves. And that, my friends, is a very, very sad Pisces moon. Tell me that's not you. Where are you on this continuum? Wherever you have Pisces in your chart, you're being asked to trust in the universe. When you do do that, surrender to the universe's divine plan for you and tap into the collective consciousness stepping outside of your own ego. Well, I will tell you, that's when you have healed your deep, your secret, your internal wounds. When you have developed a faith in yourself, in God, and in the universe and have transcended the wounds that you experienced earlier in your life, when you have been able to forgive your betrayers, and I know you've had them, and I mean really have forgiven them, and have awakened to an awareness in life way, way, way beyond your own self. Well, then, my friend, you have stepped onto the pathway of enlightenment. This, my sweet friend, is the meaning of your life on earth. And it's no small mission. 
Pisces moon person will fairly easily prioritize their spirituality in this lifetime. It's as if Pisces moon people put their souls first. Their soul and their soul's calling is what they listen to and what they ultimately follow. And when I say put their souls first, I don't mean ahead of another person. I mean ahead of their mind or their heart or their ego. And they are also by far the most sensitive creature of the zodiac. They can pick up on the moods and the feelings of other people, other animals, other creatures, other others in other dimensions, pick up messages from their spirit guides, their crossed over loved ones, their guardian angels, their angels, their ascended masters. They can astro travel. They can leave this world and go beyond. They can feel the universe and even live in a trance-like state while doing mundane life, like doing the chores in a trance-like state. It's crazy. Driving down the street or doing the dishes, but being out there. That's why people call them spaced out. They're, they've got one foot in another dimension while the other foot is here. It's like Gemini multitasking, but this is like multi-astro traveling. <laughs> they're living in parallel universes all the time. We all are, but they're highly aware of it. Pisces, can you relate? Can you relate? Tell me, leave me a comment. Please like and subscribe and share my videos with anyone that you think will benefit and other Pisces that feel so alone and so misunderstood. I'm telling you, there is nothing wrong with them. They are perfect and I just want them to know that. So Pisces moons have to have a sanctuary to escape into. They need a cave. They like to melt away, drift away, float away from reality and all the toxic pollution going on in the world, the noise pollution, the clutter, the chaos of this material world. And this cave and recharging their soul's batteries is what feeds their souls. They are very emotional and very sensitive to their own moods and to your mood because they're so attuned to the emotions and the thoughts and feelings of others and to themselves that they can come across or seem a little bit emotionally dramatic, but it's not that. It's like a dog that can hear a pin drop from a mile away. It's a heightened sensitivity that makes life and living with this clutter, and maybe even you, if you don't have a Pisces moon in your chart, unbearable at times. And their senses, all of them, are heightened, and they need pleasures to fulfill their senses. Music is a must. It is critical for Pisces and Pisces moon people. And I think without music, a Pisces moon person just might die. Pisces are maybe the most intuitive people of the entire zodiac. Scorpios and Cancers are right there with them. And so is Libra. And if you're confused by why I say Libra, please go watch my whole Libra playlist. I talk about their psychic sense and that it's pretty shocking and surprising. And no other astrologers talk about it. I don't know why. Pisces is actually maybe a little bit more psychic because they are acutely aware of everything outside of themselves. And I feel like that's the reason why they might be the most psychic of the zodiac. And it's because they can tap into the infinite way beyond themselves. It's pretty cool. Pisces are funny. Mm -hmm. Funny. They usually have a lighthearted sense of humor and they can be a little bit flamboyant and they're creative and they're almost always generous. They will give away anything and everything they have. They are visionaries and often they can actually see the future. They have premonitions. Pisces are the nurturers too and the healers and the mystics and the shamans. Tell me about a psychic experience or a telepathic moment that you've had in your life or when intuition led you into something wonderful and positive that you're grateful for. Tell me, tell me, tell me, would you please leave your story? I want to know when did your intuition click for you. Also, if you guys want a reading, everyone on my team at Team Soul Navigation has such accurate psychic intuitive gifts. Check the notes below to see everybody you can get a reading with. And if you're a super supporter, you get 10% off. I want to give away something right now just because I love my Pisces. Are you guys ready for this? I'm going to tell you. On my shop, I sell something called your big birthday bonus package. Oh, it's the mother load. I want to tell you, I am going to give away. All you have to do is mention this video and say, I watched Meredith's Pisces moon video and I will have my assistant make you a gorgeous natal chart for free 
for anybody you want. You just have to send us their information. And I will throw that in if you buy the big birthday bonus package. You guys will love it. It is so good. And if you've never got your solar return chart, buy it in this package because you get it as a discount. So it's just so exciting. And I just feel like being generous. And this is for my Pisces. I want to throw you a little love. Now, my secret tip that nobody talks about. Oh my God. <laughs> Why does nobody talk about it? To understand Pisces, you really need to know where and how Jupiter and Neptune are working in your chart. So Jupiter is the old ruler. Neptune is the new ruler. I like to go with Neptune and I'll go with Neptune in this video because I did Jupiter for Sagittarius. But this is going to show us exactly how you're going to do your Pisces work. Where is Neptune, people? <laughs> Where is Neptune in your chart? And it's going to show us how you will awaken, how you will shed your ego, and how you will merge with God and the universe, and how you will embrace your spirituality. How are you going to do it? Tell me. Tell me. Is Neptune in your chart in a happy place to Pisces? Is it in earth or water? Tell me, tell me, tell me. If it's in Virgo, it's not so much in a happy place. Um, it's in a little bit of a challenge place because that's the opposition. But if your Neptune is in fire or air, then it shows me that you will have a little bit of a challenge, that this will be challenging work for you. This is where you're going to have to put in a little bit of effort and a little bit more energy, and you may get thwarted and frustrated along your spiritual quest in life. You may feel hopelessness. You may feel like God doesn't talk to you. You may feel like your angels aren't easily accessible, but it's not true. It just means it's a little stronger wall that you have to break down. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Also, you guys, I have to tell you, we just got our miracle necklaces back in and the amazing Dawn Wonder makes all of these. Isn't this the most gorgeous necklace for Pisces? If you want to buy your Pisces moon person or yourself a gift, this necklace is, it's our miracle necklace and it is so beautiful. And when you wear it and you charge it in the new moon, Oh my gosh, you will manifest miracles. It is our aura quartz and it is the most beautiful blue I have ever seen. You can see these in my shop tab. They're absolutely gorgeous and you can see it on different skin types too. I have photos of it over there. Anyways, I love you guys. I love you. I love you. Please leave me a comment below and superstar super supporters. If you have any questions, I will answer them Mwah. from my house to yours over here in Seattle. Where are you from? Tell me where you're from. I want to know. But thank you for being here. I hope you love learning and I hope I get to see you in my master classes, superstar, super supporters and super supporters. Look for your members only videos. They're coming out. Bye.